Halifax then. Let's confirm their lineup for you. John Bentley has had to move to fullback. David Cooper is injured. Gary Richardson plays only his third appearance for Halifax this season. He's on the wing in two. There's a debut for Damien Pickles, the 18 fullback. 17 tries in the reserve side this season. He comes into the centre because Hallis is injured. Alongside him, it's Roy Litherland. And Roy Litherland taking the place of Greg Austin. Henry Sharp comes into the side for the injured Mark Preston. And now it gets better for Halifax, the first teamers. Mark Bailey is the standoff half in six. And Paul Bishop completes a former St. Helens combination at six and seven. Bishop, the scrum half, had many great days here at Nosey Road. Up front, Carl Harrison. Malcolm really would be looking for a big game from his captain, the prop forward in eight. Roy Southernwood is the hooker in nine. The former heavyweight boxer Adam Fogarty is in ten. Gary Lord is in the second row in 11, the former Castleford and Leeds man. The Queenslander Mike McLean is in 12. And Gary Devorty completes the lineup for Halifax, who are coached these days by the Great Britain coach Malcolm Reilly. Let's run the rule over the substitutes for you. Glorious pitch, by the way, here at Nosley Road. Mike Riley and the New Zealander Ricky Cowan on the bench for St Helens. And for Halifax, it's Chris Robinson and Brendan Hill. Robinson's a half-back, and Brendan Hill, the former Leeds and Bradford Northern forward. Bill Arthur walked down that tunnel not long ago. Now Halifax being led onto the field by Carl Harrison. It's a big ask of any team to get to Old Trafford from seventh place in the table. But that's what Malcolm really is hoping Halifax will do here tonight. And Carl Harrison, Premiership winner with Hull in 1991 against Witness. He joined Halifax the following August. And he and Paul Bishop are the only ever presence in this Halifax side. The runners-up in the big league. Hell-bent on getting to Old Trafford. Led out by captain Shane Cooper. They pushed Wigan all the way for the big league title. It was decided in the end only on points difference. And remember, this St Helens team took three points off the champions in the big league. And the try that Shane Cooper scored at Thrum Hall was the one that really did keep St Helens on track for a tilt at the first title since the 70s. Tira Party, who we have seen operating at standoff half this season. He's now moved into the centres because Gary Connolly has knee problems, and so the New Zealand international replaces the Great Britain international. Paul Bishop comes back to Knowsley Road, a fiery little character, and Malcolm Reilly will be hoping that he will be able to keep the lid on the temperament and produce some good moves as far as Halifax are concerned. And Paul Bishop tonight is watched by Tommy Bishop, legendary figure here at St Helens and now in Australia where he's living. Paul picked his dad up from the airport yesterday and he has turned up here tonight to watch the young fella in action. Match referee is Stuart Cummings from Witness, the man who had control, of course, just seven days ago of the championship decider at Central Park between Wigan and Castleford. I think we can lip read there. He said, don't flop. That's obviously the message that he is giving to the players. The second or third man in, laying on the tackle player, will be penalised tonight. So, it's the road to Old Trafford on May the 16th. It starts right here on Sky. St Helens against Halifax and Gus O'Donnell gets us underway. Mike McLean running the ball out from his own try line. The forward battle, as we've said, Mike, and as Malcolm really intimated before the match, will be important. Yes, I'm sure that Malcolm really will be looking forward for Carl Harrison, their skipper, to really give them a lead, move up very quickly, out of a very strong big pack of Halifax. There's one of the boys there who obviously has to do a job.
for Malcolm Reilly, Carl Harrison prop forward, Great Britain International, Southernwood to Adam Fogarty. Fogarty, the former heavyweight boxer, and he walked into Nosey Road tonight, and I was at the door when he came in, he is a huge figure of a man. Kick downfield, a tester for Sullivan. Well, we mentioned before the game, Eddie, that Halifax, their key would be in defence. And that's the type of defence that their coach will be looking for all night. They ran the Saints so close, didn't they, in the big league, twice towards the back end of the season. They say they've travelled with confidence. Well, it wasn't so long ago that uh, it was only a drop ball that took away the chance. Oh, that looked forward to me. And Stuart Cummings agrees. The slip pass from Chris Joint found Tierra Party, but it was a good yard forward. Well, the idea was there. He's a classy player there. Not much in it. The referee Cummings was correct. Just in front there for the centre of party. That spells danger straight away in the opening minutes. Bishop with the feed. He finds Bailey. Bailey to Bentley on the charge. Bentley playing fullback tonight for only the second time. Fullback last week and a try here in January in that great match that we had here on Sky Sports. Southernwood, the dummy half. This is Bishop. Misses out Devorty. Finds the Queenslander Mike McLean instead. Good run from him. It's been evident early on in this match. McLean takes the tackle from Nickel. Harrison was the decoy runner. Southernwood again challenged by Nickel. That's a type of run from the hook of Southernwood that we should see tonight. Scaring away from a quick play of the ball. Paul Bishop dabs the ball forward, looking for the winger, Henry Sharp, but the referee says that Halifax are offside. Yes, the winger Sharp just in front there, but a nice little move there by Bishop, not happy with it. He thought everything was OK, perhaps a little bit upset because Sharp had moved forward. There wasn't much in it there, you can see on the replay. Touch judge helping the referee, Cummings. John Neal, the prop forward. Prop in last year's Premiership final at Old Trafford, the Cumbrian. This is Alan Hunt, restored to the side. Dropped, they say, for disciplinary reasons for the game against Witness on Easter Monday. But now back in the fold, and Chris Joint with a brilliant run. And an excellent tackle by Bishop, but they continue the movement to Griffiths. Griffiths with the scrum cap was just nudged by Bentley and lost his footing. That was a great break by Joint. This is Cooper. Now man, David Lyon, Rapati. Rapati through the gap, over the top to Hunt. Foot in touch. So close. Foot in touch and perhaps forward pass anyway. Tremendous play by St. Helens and Rapati was screaming at Alan Hunt saying, come inside. Alan couldn't believe that he'd run out of room, but as you mentioned, Eddie, a wonderful break by the second row of Chris Joint, but it was an awful tackle, attempted tackle, should I say, by the prop forward, Adam Fogarty. Offside against Griffiths. Moved up too quickly at the scrum. Well, he tried to stop himself, but already Stuart Cummings would give the penalty. Just one step, that's enough in it. That's allowed the pressure off, but uh, tremendous play by St. Helens. They really mean business tonight. Great screen for a forward pass to Harrison. Referee says play on. Here's Adam Fogarty now, gets the ball away to Bailey. He gets through the challenge from Cooper. It's a great run from Bailey. That's a wonderful tackle from Lyon. Halifax not finished. This is Devorty now. Good tackling. Jonathan Griffiths. Oh, it started with fireworks, this one. Bishop just hangs on. McLean. The support is there from Fogarty. Good second phase of attack by Halifax there. They're keeping this ball alive and having support. A bright and enterprising start from these two sides. This is Roy Litherland. Halifax stopped 12 metres short of the line. Bentley on his own from dummy half. Gets the ball away. The movement continued. 
Litherland again, saw a little gap. Bishop appealing that the referee should wipe the tackle count clear, but he doesn't agree. This is the last one. Bailey to McLean. McLean trying to barge his way through. They keep the ball alive. Well, this could be the first try. Now he collides with the post, but he scores. It's Damien Pipples on his debut. What a start for 22-year-old Damien Pickles, the 18 fullback, and needless to say, it is his first of the season in the first team. Stone's been a championship replay, good play by the uh, debut boy Damien Pickles, picked up the loose ball there and went into it. He only has to put the ball at the side of the post, on the line, anywhere against the post, and it's a try. The Australian Mike McLean got the ball away at the last minute, Good refereeing by Cummings, he allowed play on, but what a great step. And he squeezed into it round the back of the post. Excellent play. The step there. Oh, he just went round Gus O'Donnell. That is wonderful play. There you see quite clearly, he gets the ball down. What a start. And Paul Bishop has added the extra two. That was a great run from Damien Pickles on his debut. Got a bit of a bloody nose with his collision with the... Uh, Padding at the bottom of the posts, but a great start for Halifax. Excellent. 6-0, Halifax lead. The team that finished seventh ahead of the team that finished runners-up. Now McLean again. Well, Paul Bishop was complaining to the referee that perhaps he should have said the tackle count was back to zero before Pickles picked that loose ball up and scored the try. It didn't matter at the end of the day. No, but I think uh, Bishop had every right to complain, but it appeared to me that there was a hand there by St. Helens. They're keeping the ball alive well, but Bentley is ruled, I think, that he's collected a forward pass, or was he offside? No, it's a forward pass. Well, Bailey tried to get the ball back as far as he could. Didn't look the best. There was no doubt that John Bentley was stood directly in front. But he seemed to reach back for it. Nonetheless, St. Helens in possession. They won't be arguing. This is Rapati. Called Alan Hunt inside. This time Hunt went inside. And then was met by Gary Lord and company. Carl Harrison there too. Cooper, Nickel. It's a rough, tough start by this Halifax pack. George Mann, almost away, wanting to play the ball, eventually doing so. This is Jonathan Neal. Now St Helen's turn to exert a bit of pressure again. Cooper, O'Donnell, dabs the ball forward. That's good thinking by O'Donnell. So The drop goal specialist for Saints has come up with his opening try of this campaign. Well, a stone bit of premiership replay will show O'Donnell didn't get the right kick to him, but what on earth was John Bentley doing? I cannot believe that he just stayed back there. Good work by Gus O'Donnell. He doesn't get the right contact to it. You see him come into it, had to reach forward to it. He wanted to keep it a little bit deeper there. But what on earth was Bentley doing? He had all the time in the world to get through. He just stayed off, held off, and paid the price. And not surprisingly, Gus O'Donnell is very happy indeed. He's had to be patient. The man who was signed as a scrum half has played hooker as well this season, the £80,000 man from Wigan. And now Lachlan with this conversion attempt. And we're all level. It's six points all. On my watch, we're coming up to ten minutes. Well, this is where Bentley just held off, and I don't know why, but he just gave the impetus there. There you can see it quite clearly. And O'Donnell can't believe it. John Bentley looking ruefully downfield, reflecting on the mistake, but Gus O'Donnell showing Paul Gascoigne-style soccer skills there. And let's hope that uh, England get as much charity from Holland in the World Cup qualifier next week that you can see, of course, exclusively live on Sky.
Here's George Mann. So St Helens and Halifax level pegging at six points all. Jonathan Neal. Well, it's got off to a cracking pace as this both sides eager to get on with the job. You'll notice that both sides are trying to play the ball quickly. Chris Joint. Oh, and there was a swinging arm over the top then from Gary Lord. Well, you see quite clearly that is just foolish play. His head would have finished up in Wigan if it had connected there. Whoa! Joint just ducks at the last moment. Silly penalty there. That won't please his coach, Malcolm Reilly. Well, a good job that uh, Chris Joint ducked. St Helens then with this next set of six. Man turns the ball back inside to Cooper. Nickel continues the movement on, and it took three to bring him down. Man again. Ball out to Rapati. Rapati running strongly. Remember Tia Rapati with us on Sky last Friday, watching as Wigan won the championship. It wasn't one of his best nights. I wonder whether this one will be. And here comes Joint again. He's in a dangerous mood, this Chris Joint, the second rod. He's having a whale of a game. Jonathan Griffiths. Taken low by Fogarty and high by Harrison. Last tackle. It's with O'Donnell. Drop goal attempt. Hits the bar. Bounces off the referee. Play on. Well, unfortunately for St. Helens there, there you saw the ball was bouncing straight back to them. They would have regained possession. Gus O'Donnell, six drop goals this season. And that's Gary Richardson, the... Halifax ponytailed winger. This is Mark Bailey and Malcolm Reilly watching from the far side of the ground in the director's box, getting an elevated view of his team's performance. Harrison back to Southernwood, keeps the ball alive to Fogarty, to Bishop, to Lord. Good tackling St Helens, that's the fifth. Bishop, left-footed, aims it towards the corner flag, and will it run dead? David Lyon lets it go, and yes, it has. Intelligent kick there by Paul Bishop. Unfortunately, it just went dead in goal, but at least it gives them the chance to put a lot of pressure on the St. Helens side. As we mentioned earlier, Halifax really have got to get in early and make their presence felt with some very strong tackles. O'Donnell and Rapati out to the far side. It was asking a lot of Sullivan and Richardson has got it back for Halifax. It's not a bad showing this, Mike, from this reserve team three-quarter line of Halifax, is it? Well, we thought they were going to be run over over the top of, but uh, with passes like that, that should have been taken. Sullivan didn't appear to uh, be taking notice. Bishop now, and he brings McLean into it. Tries to get the pass away. And Griffiths picks up the pieces for St. Helens. Both sides trying to force the pace. And that's the sort of tackling we were talking about. Fogarty really getting involved there. Contrast between these two sides, St. Helens have ended the season in blistering style. Seven straight victories. Halifax only two wins from their last seven. But they're matching St Helens all the way tonight, although they couldn't stop joint. Will they stop man? Yes. And Mike McLennan watching from behind the posts here at Nosey Road. Here's Nickel. The Halifax defence has moved up. O'Donnell hits the ball a bit too strong. That will run dead too and does. He knew he kicked it too strong. You could hear him shout out as soon as it left his boot. He knew that he'd put a little bit too much weight behind it. What an entertaining game. Seesawing from one end to the other. 
Six all, Fogarty in possession for Halifax. Another great run from him. Good tackle from David Lyon. He just waltzed through the first line of St. Helens' defence. Bishop. That was a risky ball, and Devorty dropped it. He's claiming it was stolen from him. Referee says no, St. Helens can play on. No, he tried to get the ball away there. He had a chance to take that, push it through. Oh, and another mistake by St. Helens. Ball behind, that'll be a feed to Halifax. That was a woeful attempt there. Misunderstanding between Lachlan and his winger, Anthony Sullivan. They're not happy about it. They've done a good job under this uh, A-team lineup in the three quarters for Halifax. Not much experience between them. Average age of about 20, 22. Here's Bentley, the fullback, who'll want to make amends for fluffing that uh, try to O'Donnell. This is McLean. Corson Helen's no doubt being watched tonight by Kevin Ward from his hospital bed in Whiston Hospital. Ward so tragically injured in the Wigan match on Good Friday, and all of us at Sky Sports wish him a speedy recovery from an horrendous injury. Not only a speedy recovery, but let's see him get back on the paddock as well. Southernwood to Bishop. Southernwood takes over again. That's Devorty on the charge, and Devorty takes Halifax to within a couple of metres. Southernwood from dummy half, back to Bishop. Drop goal from Bishop, and Bishop adds the one-pointer. Halifax back in front. Good work by Bishop. Wasn't the best of passes, but he got it away with the left foot. Excellent play. We just saw a couple of minutes previous, Gus O'Donnell have one drop goal attempt, hit the crossbar. But that really was good thinking by Paul Bishop. His second drop goal of the season. O'Donnell could only manage to hit the crossbar. And Bishop, the man who's played in three premiership finals in 1986 and 87 for Warrington, and in 1992, for St. Helens against Wigan before he moved across the Pennines to Halifax. Gavin well, Lord now. Halifax must be feeling pretty in, uh, happy about the way they've started. St. Helens, they, they seem to be hanging off a little bit. There's been some very good runs, especially from Fogarty and Harrison and the second row of Gary Lord and Mike McLean. They really are making inroads into this St. Helens defence. Great tackling at the play of the ball, though, by Shane Cooper. Now Fogarty. That's the last one. Southernwood to Bishop, who tries a kick towards the other corner, and that's rolling, rolling, and beating Anthony Sullivan. A great kick from the little fella. Good left foot, intended as well. Kick the ball over the top. Makes it spin, spinning over and over and over. That's what happens when you really do hit the top of the, the apex of the ball and fold it right over. Goes away so quickly. O'Donnell gets possession from the scrum and sets off on a great run. They're all after him here. He has support from Sullivan. He just couldn't get it round the centre of Damien Pickles. But St. Helens have got acres of room out here. Lachlan to a party. He just hangs on. He finds Hunt, Hunt tries to go through Bentley, good tackling in the end. It was Bentley hanging on to his shirt tails, and Henry Sharp downstairs. This is Rapati, now Griffiths, jinking through Griffiths. Oh, great tackle, excellent tackle by Mark Bailey. Saints still not finished. To joint, to man, out to the far side, Sullivan. Back in field to man, knock on, and Halifax's defence stands when they were under the severest pressure. Sullivan did well here to get the ball away, but I'm afraid the prop forward, George Mann, just gets his hand to it, the knock on. A wasted opportunity, but what a great defence from Halifax. They scrambled back. It all came about from the scrum win by St. Helens on their own quarter. Good break by Gus O'Donnell. Gary Devorty was very slow getting out of the pack to prevent it. You've got to hand it to him, Eddie. This Halifax is scrambling back in defence. But what a great tackle by Mark Bailey on Jonathan Griffiths when it looked as though he was heading right underneath the sticks. It's a great game. We're midway through this first half. Halifax have just edged the lead, 7-6. One of their injured back line is Mark Preston. 
and he is talking now downstairs with Bill. Mark, uh, nail-biting stuff, that was great defence just there. Yeah, it was excellent scrambling defence, I think uh, we've got a scratch side out, uh, and I think everybody th thought we were going to get, you know, hammered really, and uh, at the moment we're holding our own, if, if not, you know, playing better than they are. The forwards are really making a lot of ground uh, up front, and uh, Damien Pickle scored a great try, which on his debut will give him some confidence early on. And it's really a, a case of keeping this going now, isn't it? Yeah, that's right, I don't think St. Helens are looking anything like, you know, they have done in the league so far, so if we can keep this going, particularly this defence, we've got to scramble well, which we did then when they made a break, then, uh, you know, I feel confident that we can win. It would be a big victory for Halifax if they do win here. They've won only twice since the war at Nosley Road. And it would be a major surprise. Oh, there's a bit of a fist being thrown there by Roy Litherlin as he brought Rapati down. The referee didn't see it. Well, I'm not so sure that it was the fist. It looked like the flat of the hand. He's only trying to get him down. But, oh, well, I don't know. It looked like the forearm. I'll take it back. Litherland won't. Rapati's all right, though. Dwyer, the dummy half. Cooper, the St. Helens fans, you can hear them increasing the volume. They're getting just a touch frustrated by this. George Mann shrugs Devorty away, great strength, finds Sullivan, he drops it, all very untidy, it's a knock-on. Once again, we see St. Helens not respecting this possession. Another mistake from Sullivan. He won't be happy with that. Two tries for Anthony Sullivan in last year's Premiership final, which St. Helens were leading at half-time, but then they were blitzed off Old Trafford by Wigan. But they want the chance of revenge against the champions at Old Trafford this season, and if seedings are anything to go by, one should play two, it should be Wigan against Saints. There's a lot of rugby to be played, though, between then and now, and a lot to be played here tonight. Well, that looked like a little knock-on from the hook of Southern Wood, but the referee Stewart come and says, play on. And the St. Helens crowd going wild, they claim there were forward passes there too. This is Bishop though now, wrapped up by O'Donnell, gets the ball away brilliantly to Southernwood. Bailey helps it wide, oh, and Pickles is able to pick up, Pickles steps inside, and Lyon and Sullivan had to be quick on defence then. Last tackle, Bentley, ball out wide to Richardson, and that's the turnover, six tackles gone. The ball will be immediately handed over to St. Helens. Well, I'm not so sure that John Bentley took the right option there, trying to squeeze in at the blind side with Richardson. When they had Paul Bishop screaming, wanted to take the kick. But I get the impression, Eddie, that the crowd is shouting, and some of these St. Helens players in defence are expecting the referee to blow up because they're not moving up, they're allowing Halifax to come to them. And that can only spell disaster. I think they're also claiming the supporters that Halifax are standing offside at these play the balls. But this is Alan Hunt now on the run, trying to get round Henry Sharp. Bishop came in a little bit high. And Alan Hunt not too happy with it. Man to Cooper to Sonny Nickel. Nickel on the charge. Good tackling. Damien Pickles is having quite a match, Mike, the Halifax centre. Well, we thought that it, perhaps he might be a little bit overawed by the occasion, but he's not. He's getting involved not only in attack, but also in defence. O'Donnell drives the ball down to John Bentley. Now, Bentley, does he have the pace to get away from Griffiths? He does. He is a winger, of course, John Bentley. And he's made, well, 12 metres there, but he's run right the way from one side of the field to the other. This now is Richardson. Fogarty. I'm afraid this St. Helens defence is allowing Halifax far too much latitude. Every time Halifax pass the ball now, the St. Helens supporters on the terraces are screaming for a forward pass. Bishop. Last tackle, oh, Bishop falls like he was Polak's, and the referee right, in my view. Well, half 
halfbacks will try to get away with anything, won't they? He built that for all it was worth, and it didn't pay. Dying swan, this. Forgot to duck. Well, they loved him when he was here at Nosley Road, Paul Bishop. They love him at Thrumhall now. He's an infuriating character if he's on the opposite side to you, and of course he is now for St Helens. Lachlan. There you can see the difference in the two defences. Halifax are moving up quickly, not allowing St Helens any move at all. They're forcing St Helens into playing one-out football. Dwyer's the dummy half, Cooper. Oh, George Mann took that one-handedly, and it stuck like glue. Dwyer. Neat run from Dwyer, felled by Gary Law. Last tackle, Alan Hunt screaming for the ball out here. That's bounced off a Halifax player, but it's still the fifth tackle. David Lyon with the run. Gets the ball back to Cooper. Play on, says the referee. Hunt screaming for the ball out wide. They go down the middle instead to Dwyer. Halifax eventually bring the movement to a halt. It's the turnover again. Once again, scrambling defence coming to the rescue of Halifax. But St. Helens really didn't know what to do there. They're lacking in the options. We saw that their hooker, Bernard Dwyer, opted for the kick. Now, the ball was kicked directly at the Halifax player. That's, that is play on. If the Halifax player had made a motion to it, moved towards it, then it would have been like a charge down. That meant that the tackle count would restart, but the referee Cummings was correct there. Mike McLean, oh, that was risky business. And Lachlan's picked it up for St Helens, but he's flung the pass out wide to Sullivan, but he's had to collect on halfway. Richardson had forced him back in field. Well, Anthony Sullivan will probably be wondering when he's going to get a good pass, and that really wasn't on. Mike McLean, the Australian, shouldn't have tried to force a pass there. No point in trying to get the ball away in heavy traffic. That's Chris Joint with a little half break, and it was a good job that Richardson was there. Saints in possession with O'Donnell and now Nicholl. Surely St. Helens will use the kick now. Neil, they're driving it downfield again with the prop. Are they looking to work their way into a drop goal position? Oh, scrambling defence, but a little bit too eager. The referee has said that Halifax moved off the mark to make the tackle. Well, they're claiming that they weren't square. You can see that Mike McLean didn't really come back behind the man. You're allowed two at the play of the ball, of course, for those that don't know the rules of rugby league but you must stand behind each other. There you can see Gary Lord, McLean, a little bit too late to get themselves organised. This should be a gift two points for St. Helens. It's Paul Lachlan with the kick. Not too difficult for a kicker of his quality. Talking to him last week, he said he's uh, taken a bit of stick from the St. Helens supporters for the two Conversion attempts he missed in the Good Friday match at Wigan, but it's all history now. It's all behind him. And he was straight enough and true enough then. 8-7, the lead to St Helens for the first time. I think St Helens will be quite relieved to think that they were going in near to the half-time break with a, at least a one-point lead. Coming up to half an hour gone. St Helens with a one-point advantage. But it's been a tremendous tussle so far, it really has. I think St Helens, perhaps, when they looked at the team sheet for Halifax, thought that all they had to do was turn on the field and win. But Halifax playing on guts and determination. And not too little skill, and that was a drop ball! Oh, John Neal dropped that in the tackle. The referee had a glance at the touch judge, and now Saints have got the penalty. Yes, yeah, Carl Harrison getting his hand inside, pulled the ball away. A little bit unfortunate, a little bit... Say that they lost the ball, Jonathan Neal, earlier. But the skipper, Carl Harrison, a 
this is the one early. You can see quite clearly that Jonathan Neal did drop the ball. Lady Luck plays a big part. The referee, Stuart Cummings, was unsighted, but he glanced to his touch judge and then waved play on. So the touch judge didn't see it, but our camera most certainly did. Well, we mentioned before the game started, Eddie, that St. Helens, they have to get this ball out wide. Halifax will try to make them play a forward game, and that's what they're doing. They're succeeding. Griffiths, that's a lovely break, but straightens the arms of Bailey, and Bailey turns defence into attack. But Griffiths comes back, completes the tackle, and make amends. Henry Sharp now. Well, nice play by Griffiths to make the break, but really that wasn't on once again. When there's heavy traffic, you park up, you don't pass the ball, don't take the chance. Play on, says the referee, and it's six to go. It was Jonathan Neal getting in there with a hand as they play the ball. Getting back to the fact that St. Helens have to get this ball out wide. They really have got the advantage with the speed out in the three quarters, but they're not getting a chance to it. Bailey, little half break, he's got Bentley in support, but Bentley will try and turn Lyon. Lyon stuck to the guns. Bishop, Devorty. Gets the ball away to Bishop again. They have support this time. They've blown it though. It came off the shoulder of Gary Law. Oh, a missed chance there. Good play by Bishop. A little bit too high was the pass. And Gary Law really caught one there. You'll see as it bounces off. Sonny Nickel really goes over the top. Not only made the mistake, but finished up with a headache for his, uh, for his hard work. Now this is Tia Rapati. Rapati on the break. Good play by Rapati, but he was uh, cluttered to the ground by McLean. Referee had a long, hard look and decided to allow play to continue with Griffiths. Well, no doubt about it, McLean swinging the right arm. But I just get the impression that this crowd, Eddie, they'd boo Santa Claus. Mike McLean, the Queenslander. Five state of origins for Queensland. Southernwood picks it up and finds Bishop. He finds Damien Pickles. What a debut Pickles is having. What a good tackle by Sullivan. Bishop from dummy half, gets the ball away to Richardson. St. Helens having to defend strongly now. Bishop, long pass to Southernwood. To Bailey, oh, Bailey tried to get that ball away. He was wrapped up by Dwyer, and Dwyer has forced the knock on. Beautiful tackle, ball and all, look at the impact there. Bailey could do nothing about it. The ball was bounced down onto the floor. Excellent play there by the hooker, Bernard Dwyer. Saints have the possession with Gus O'Donnell, just ankle tapped by Devorty, the momentum stops. Gary Connolly, who's out of the St. Helens side tonight, is now with Bill Arthur downstairs. Gary, this is looking to be like a real struggle for Saints, isn't it? Oh, yes, indeed. Uh, we've played Halifax twice now in the both in our games, and we know it's going to be in our game, and it's uh, turning out that way. Uh, but you're not doing yourselves any favours, are you? No, we're throwing the ball around, we're not controlling it, we're not playing a good set of six with a good chase, uh, and we're dropping too many balls and missing too many tackles. And yet, there's the, just the signs there that if you do get it right, you could go to town. Yeah, for one of the two of the passes that we've been passing about, uh, old, I think, uh, we've scored a few uh, tries, but we're saying that the ball has to go to hand, and uh, I think we've won a few daft passes out. Gary Connolly's touchline view, meanwhile, Saints have the penalty because as you could see Gary Devorty flopped on the grounded St Helens player stopped him playing the ball quickly and that's what modern day rugby league is all about this now is Chris Joint good tackling McLean the Australian on joint Dwyer gets the ball away to Rapati Rapati looking for any chink in that Halifax defence still going the strength of the New Zealander what a season he has had one of the leading contenders for the First Division Player of the Year award, Tia Rapati. Griffiths throws the ball away in disgust, and the referee will have none of that. He's given a Halifax penalty. 
Well, they just got the fingers to it, to my mind. Said a few words to the referee, Stuart Cummings, which is not the best thing for a professional footballer. You cannot beat them. Ricky Cowan, the New Zealander, coming on. And Sonny Nicholl is coming off, and he doesn't look pleased, does he, that he's been taken off and replaced by Ricky Cowan. He's chattering all the way to the bench. He's taken the strapping off his wrist, and he is not best pleased, Sonny Nickel. Well, to be fair, he's only had one good run as Sonny Nickel, and I'm sure that their coach, Mike McLennan, wasn't too happy with his work rate. So Cowan on, and immediately into the tackling. Ricky Cowan, the New Zealand international, there he is with the white band round his head, and there's the man he's replaced, a rather disgruntled Sonny Nickel. Bishop gets the ball away to Lord. Oh, that was a risky pass, but fortunately Roy Litherland was there for Halifax. And then Litherland runs straight back into the congested area of the field and Dwyer's able to bring him down. Harrison looked to get that one over the top, still trying to get it away. He claims that George Mann stole the ball, or at least knocked it out of his hands, and the referee unimpressed. Yes, it's a problem rule, isn't it? And there you can see the problem with St. Helens. Halifax defence giving them nowhere to go. Tierra Party is hauled into touch. But a penalty because the tackle was completed before a party was dumped in there by Roy Litherland. Well, he's probably feeling a little bit upset about that. The thing was, was the Rapati's progress stopped? You saw that as soon as he made the tackle, that the touch judge shouted out, get off him, let him play the ball. Then he dragged him away. The touch judge also put his flag up for the man in touch and then immediately put it down again. However, six St. Helens penalty to two for Halifax. O'Donnell to Griffiths. Griffiths on a diagonal run now, stopped by Mark Bailey. Bailey against his former club. This is Chris Joint. Dabbed that ball forward. Picked up by Richardson. Now then. I was going to say, does Richardson have the legs? The answer emphatically no. He saw the gap, realised he didn't have the speed, stopped and came back inside, took safety first. McLean dancing away from the tackles. This is Gary Lord. Litherland's there. So too is Henry Sharp. Sharp round the fullback. He can't get round O'Donnell. Great tackle from the scrum half. Halifax trying to swing that ball out wide now the other way with Bentley. Bentley, they have an overlap, but the referee has brought it back for obstruction. Well, that was unfortunate there for Halifax. I thought that they could have been given a penalty in the first place when Gus O'Donnell was all over the man. He wouldn't let him get up there, you can see. Bentley running round the back. And that really is a wasted opportunity. But before that, when Halifax had made the break, Gus O'Donnell was all over the man and never let him get up and play the ball. Referee Stuart Cummins obviously suggesting perhaps that Halifax would gain a better position of field if they could play on. Well, it's been a rip-roaring first half between these two. The league championship season might be over, but now we're very much in premiership action, and that's a mistake from Jonathan Neal, trying to force the pace as he went down in the tackle to knock on. Well, both coaches, Malcolm Reilly and Mike McLennan, will have plenty to say about possession. You must respect it, but a lot of the ball has been spilt by some of these really heavy tackles. Here's Richardson for... Halifax skipping away from one, couldn't get away from the next two. We're in added time in this first half, 8-7, St. Helens lead. Here's McLean, grounded, well, stopped still anyway. Devorty fed by Bishop, that was not forward, and the crowd are shouting and screaming for a forward pass every time Halifax play the ball. That's quite ridiculous. What isn't is that this is a terrific contest. St. Helens 8, Halifax 7, 
Gus O'Donnell's try and Paul Bishop, the man who's at the heart of everything that Halifax are doing tonight. Tremendous encounter here at Nosey Road. 8-7 Saints at the break. Sky's three great movie channels. Now nine movies every night. This weekend. Rick Mayo and Phoebe.